Saturday on Denver 7. More information out of Texas this morning. The mistakes that are causing nationwide outrage as Uvalde continues to mourn. It's important that they remember every generation pays a price for our freedom. It's Memorial Day weekend and Colorado military members are being honored in their own way. We're taking a closer look at the meaning of this holiday weekend. <laughs> And a big sigh of relief behind all that celebrating. The Avs are making their way to the Western Conference Finals. How fans were feeling after the big win. Good morning and welcome to Denver 7 News. I'm Jessica Crawford. And I'm Katie LaSalle. Thank you so much for joining us. And here are some stories that we're following for you this holiday weekend. We're first taking a look back at 2013 when Colorado saw one of its worst floods in history. Neighborhoods were destroyed. 400 miles of highway was damaged. Some of it even disintegrated. But this weekend marks a major milestone. The last highway that was closed for repairs is opening today, but it's not quite finished yet. Back in 2013, CDOT worked around the clock to reopen all the damaged roads within about two and a half months, but those were just temporary repairs. Since then, they've been working on permanent repairs. The last project to finish up was Highway 7 near Lyons that opened yesterday. While the road will reopen to drivers today, the last of the work won't be finished until the fall. The Boulder Creek Festival returns today. There's going to be music, craft beer vendors, and family-friendly activities. This festival has now been around for more than 30 years and will take place along the Boulder Creek from 9th to 14th streets between Canyon Boulevard and Arapahoe Avenue. If you're ready to enjoy a sunny day in the water, two water parks are opening today, Elitch mm -hmm. Gardens and Waterworld. Waterworld opened two new attractions in the middle of last summer, a water coaster and a splash down pool. The Brighton Oasis Aquatic Park opens next Wednesday. Pirates cover opens next Saturday. And it'll be a nice day to cool off. Temperatures will be in the high 80s this afternoon. Right now, it's a really beautiful start to the morning. More cloud coverage making for a stunning sunrise up over Rocky Mountain National Park. Dry conditions right now. It's going to be mainly dry statewide. Temperatures warm for this time of the year, climbing to about 10 degrees above average. Currently, it is 60 degrees out of the airport. Winds are sustained from the southwest at 12 miles per hour. Breezy this afternoon, fire danger elevated over southern Colorado. No advisories for Denver, but those temperatures expected to hit the high 80s right around 3 p.m. 62 degrees in Highlands Ranch right now. We're in the upper 50s, Arvada, Golden, up into Boulder, your hourly planner for this Saturday. Expect those temperatures to heat to the high 70s already by 10 o'clock, climbing to the low to upper 80s. So Denver's day of rock by evening. It's still going to be in the 80s here in town and up into the high country. A better chance for seeing more widespread storm activity will arrive on Sunday. I'll take you through the hourly planner because some wetter weather is on the way for the second half of this Memorial Day weekend. We're now getting insight to the deadly mass shooting that happened in Uvalde, Texas earlier this week. 21 people, that includes 19 children, died Tuesday when a gunman opened fire inside a classroom at Robb Elementary. We now know the incident commander on the scene misjudged the situation. That's according to top law enforcement in Texas. The commander initially thought it was not an active shooter, but a barricaded person inside the school, meaning they thought the children inside were not in danger. They claim that's what led to a 45 minute delay before officers would go inside and kill that gunman. For the benefit of hindsight, where I'm sitting now, of course it was not the right decision. It was a wrong decision, period. There's no, no excuse for that. We believe there should have been an entry at that as soon as you can. The gunman entered the school through a door originally opened by a teacher who left it open to get a phone. The investigation into the shooting is ongoing. When situations like this occur, police departments do have protocols for how officers should respond. And those protocols are built off lessons learned from Columbine back in 1999. Grant Whitus was the first SWAT officer to go inside at Columbine High School. Officers has w had waited 47 minutes and set up a perimeter before entering the school. And the most important lesson from that day, Police should go in right away. It's a strategy that's been successful in saving lives during shootings like the STEM school shooting in Highlands Ranch. But that's not what we're learning happened in Texas. Whitus says he is waiting for the investigation to wrap up before making any judgments, but he says police are trained to go in right away. Anything short of those first officers getting in there the first minute they got there, they're in the duty. For the past 23 years, Whitus has trained thousands of officers on active shooter protocols, and he says there is always more training to be done. 
It's Memorial Day weekend, and while a lot of people are already on vacation or preparing for it, it's important to remember why we have this long weekend in the first place. Yes, Denver 7's Christian Lopez is in Aurora now, where the Colorado Freedom Memorial is about to have a special ceremony for our military, Christian. Good morning, guys. Yeah, that's right. This starts in about an hour and you can see them setting everything up and getting everything ready here behind me. So it'll kick off at eight with a pancake breakfast, followed by a memorial ceremony at 10. And then after that, people will be invited to tour the memorial site as well as visit a military vehicle display. The event Colorado Remembers commemorates those who have served in the military and their families. And while many will enjoy a day off on Monday, it is important to remember that Memorial Day is when we honor America Americans killed in the line of duty and event organizers are encouraging you to take at least a couple hours of your weekend to pay your respects as well as teach your kids about why it's important. It's the unofficial start of summer. We all know that there will be barbecues and camping and there will be parties as well there should, but it came at a cost. And this is the weekend that we remember that cost, that price we pay for freedom. And the event today is free, but donations are welcome. And we will, we will stay out here and continue bringing you live updates throughout our newscasts. Live in Aurora this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Christian, thank you. Well, veterans in Northern Colorado have a new option for medical care. A new outpatient clinic is opening in Loveland. It's four times the size of the old clinic and will offer everything from primary care to mental health to x-rays and even dental services. It's about the, the human experience. And, and that's what veterans, I think, are gonna really uh, value and appreciate. It's that human connection, it's that caring, it's that support, that compassion uh, that we bring to the table for veterans. Officials say the clinic has a very modern look on the outside and state-of-the-art equipment on the inside, and about 40% of the staff are veterans themselves. Whether you served in the military or not, the VA is asking people to donate blood. The VA is calling this the Roll Up Your Sleeves campaign. We encourage first time donors. We want people from all different ethnicities to go and give blood. So more than 65% of Americans can give blood. Even if you're not vaccinated, you can go and give blood. Even if you've had COVID-19 in the past, you can go and give blood as long as it's been more than 10 days and all the symptoms have been resolved. You can make an appointment to give blood at any VA center or private center like Bonfils. The VA just asks that you tell them you're doing this as a part of the Roll Up Your Sleeves campaign. Like millions of other Americans, Luther Berglund bravely fought for the U.S. Army during World War II. But Luther also served his country during the Korean and Vietnam Wars, just in different ways. And I got to see how just one decision in his life and career path that ultimately brought him to Colorado. Walking through the Broomfield Veterans Museum with Luther Berglund is like stepping into a history book with the author. That's a Korea outfit there. Drafted just a few months after high school graduation, this history... That's the old Ike jacket I was talking about. ...is Luther's history. Army was vacation for us guys that are raised on the farm. <laughs> a member of the Army's 547 Field Infantry Battalion, Luther served on the European front during World War II. We finished up the war and took a lot of prisoners and I... Hundreds or maybe thousands. It was during combat Luther made a life defining decision. Lord found me in a foxhole, I guess. I kind of came back to faith, and, uh, and then I decided at that time I needed to do something with my life other than farming. That something was to become a pastor, ultimately serving both God and his country as an army chaplain during the Korean War. I enjoyed conducting services in the field and uh, being with the guys in the trenches, so to speak. And it was in those trenches of Korea where the chaplain earned a bronze star, the military honor for heroic achievement. It got to be kind of chaotic and the South Korean troops were retreating through our ranks and uh, I got out and kind of directed traffic and got things going. After Korea, Luther and his growing family moved to Boulder, where he continued to serve his country as a member of the Army Reserves. One night a week during the Vietnam War, Luther would travel to Fitzsimmons Army Hospital in Denver, where his job was to tell family members they had lost a loved one. We were given an address and told that they had lost their child there husband and that was very difficult. You've had such a special role with bringing the Lord to yeah. so many people over the years. 
what is what do you think that's meant to them and to you? Well, I hope a lot to them, but uh, to me, they just sort of take it for granted that uh, that's what we did, preaching and reaching out to people. Luther Berglund spent 40 years serving his country during three different wars, and he says he wouldn't have it any other way. I always liked the military very much because it just did a lot for me, and I hope I did a lot for it. And Luther is one of the veterans being honored during the Memorial Day tribute at the conclusion of this year's Boulder Boulder. You can watch that tribute hosted by our own Mike Nelson live on Monday at noon right here on Denver 7. Fascinating story, Katie. And if you're planning on running or watching the Boulder Boulder on Monday, there is a way to have any info that you might need right in the palm of your hand. One of the best ways to find parking and get other information is the free Boulder Boulder app. There's lots of information in there. There's an info tab where it helps you during race day for your parking and transportation. And it's got maps and things. So that's very helpful. But it also has in the info section, a little button called the swag bag where all of our sponsors have had really great coupons they've put in there. And once the race starts, you can track up to 20 people. You can even get push alerts as they pass certain points. The Boulder Boulder app is free in the Apple Store and Google Play, and Denver 7 is a proud sponsor of that race. A lot of happiness there. That was the scene at Tom's Watch Bar in McGregor Square last night as the Avs put the game winner in the net. Fans we talked to after the game say, bring on the Oilers. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's all for the cup, and that's all that matters. And hey, we are so excited for the city, for the state. The Avs are going to take it home, and it's going to be unbelievable. Hey, we have time to celebrate, but the Avs kind of don't. Game one of the Western Conference Finals is Tuesday night at Ball Arena. Nick is going to be there reporting on the highlights in sports. And if you're about to head out to the airport, you might want to brace yourself. DIA says traffic could be at pre-pandemic levels this weekend, how you can be on time for your flight. And if you're staying local this weekend, there are some detours to keep in mind downtown when 16th Street is expected to be up and running back like normal.